Deltarune. A wonderful game with wonderful characters, a bunch of wonderful mysteries, and the ability to destroy absolutely all of it with just a few short steps. Over the past few days, I've managed to create the worst possible save of chapters 1 and 2 so I could be prepared for chapter 3 and farther whenever they release. I also plan on making the best possible save for a future video, so subscribe for that if it seems like something you'd be interested in, and let's begin. Quick disclaimer, I recommend you save your other save files which are easily accessible under app data, local, and then deltarune to another folder. That way your original saves are completely safe to continue from when more chapters come out. Also, just in case save files can be tainted by your actions because this game tracks literally everything you do, having your evil save sectioned off might be a good idea. First off, make sure to hold down C to skip dialogue during this run. It'll save your wrists and speed things up quite a bit. Name your vessel what it honestly is and get rolling with chapter 1. It's really important to start with chapter 1 to truly create the worst save file. There are some differences contrary to what people might think. Tell Ralsei you've already heard his story, toss his manual on the ground twice, and move on to the field of hopes and dreams. Kill literally every enemy. It probably doesn't matter because none of them actually die. But given what we found in chapter 2, there's more than likely some switch being flipped whenever you decide to kill everything in the area, so do it just to be safe. Take this broken cake for later. Punch C round in the face. Buy a spooky sword for Chris, it'll save some time with getting kills. Ignore the tutorial dealer completely. Definitely not intentionally get the box puzzle wrong to upset Ralsei. Head up north, input this code, and then grab the first shovel key piece. After heading through the checkerboard land, you'll be faced with K round. You can't kill him unless you hack the game, so don't even bother. I wasted a lot of time trying. Just a reminder, kill everything you can. There are some exceptions, but I'll talk about them when we get to them. Leave no turn unstoned, as they say. Input this code. Grab the dice brace, and then this code to open up the gate. Kill Clover. Have Malleus fix your cake for later. Talk to Susie and Lancer, and don't buy any cookies from them, you monster! Go down at this point right here, and it puts you on the path to pick up your second Jevil Key piece. When you get to the part of the game where you make the machine to thrash your own ass, go ahead and make the most evil combination you can possibly think of. I went duck, duck, treads because that thing would run you over and smile while doing it. Don't pick up the Star Walker. Get the first Gaster Egg randomly by going back and forth between these rooms. We still don't know if they'll have any purpose, or if they're going to be a good purpose or an evil purpose, and you can't actually get the second egg at all when you're on the worst path possible, but it's worth picking up just in case. When you fight Susie and Lancer, beat up Lancer. It takes a little while, but eventually Susie gives in and stops the fight. Ralsei talks about how we should have taken it easy on them. Ralsei doesn't know shit. Get abducted by the king's royal crew and swear vengeance on them. Take the shackles off the wall and eat the moss, you freak. Go through the entire castle as usual, and then buy a few amber cards and a brave axe for Susie. Before you continue, make sure you go talk to Jevil in the basement to start a side quest. Backtrack all the way to the portal doors and go to the field. Talk to Sham about him, and he'll give you the final piece of the the Jevil key. Go back to Malleus and have him fix the key. Go back to Jevil and make sure you have every best item equipped and an inventory of items to use and beat him to death. You'll probably have to use the top cake here unless you're a pro. You'll get the Devil's Knife, which is a great upgrade for Susie, and a Shadow Crystal, which you can give to Sham later on. The Jevil fight can be tough, but if you followed me so far, you should be able to beat him with some practice. Fight K round again as usual and proceed to the chapter boss, King. Optional, get a hitless fight against him like I did on accident for this recording. I'm allowed to brag, I'm bad at games leave me alone eventually Susie pacifies him and you get run out of the dark world by a stampede of monsters once you're in the overworld you're not done head directly to the library and look at birdly for no particular reason go check on rudy in the hospital and don't actually interact with him at all like a psychopath tell sans you won't babysit papyrus like a psychopath go to asgore's flower shop check out his dope ass golden flower and put your egg in the fridge it multiplies indicating that you have done something wrong get the bouquet from him and then walk right back up to him and throw it on the ground in front of his face tell onion song you won't be his friend like a psychopath go home and flush the toilet excessively doing your part to contribute to the overall waste in your town and look at yourself in the mirror yeah it's only you you garbage go to bed trash make absolutely sure after the end cutscene that you load your completion data from chapter one to start chapter two wake up and immediately steal five dollars from Azrael's dresser look in the mirror again and take a deep breath <sighs> do you really want this is it really worth it did you pass go and collect two hundred dollars you did? Alright, let's get moving then. Tell Noelle you were doing crime and head back to the Dark World. If you go where the Jevil's Tail usually is when you start Chapter 2, you're gonna find this guy instead. I honestly don't know what any of this means, but I haven't seen people mention it very often, and I think it only happens if you load a save where you killed Jevil. Moving on. Rub it in King's face that he lost and he's a loser and you're a winner and you won. Leave Dark World and head to Cyber World. Kill everything again! You're gonna Snowgrave! 
again. But this time, I've got a little bit more to show you. Go to the Apple Puzzle and take the Fiber Scarf. Do not talk to Newbert. Fuck that guy. From here until you meet up with Noel, everything's as usual. Fight everyone, have the best items equipped, you get it. Noel joins your team and from here on out we're doing the Snowgrave route. Kill everything in your path from here on with Noel's Ice Shock, never attack normally. Backtrack to Spam Tons hideout, interact with it, and then go back on the normal path. Something a lot of us didn't know is that you can actually skip the annoying mouse room and start the proceed abuse early. Just keep moving forward as if you're gonna leave Noel there and tell her to proceed and you're good to go. Kill everything in your path on your way to the ferris wheel room, kill the enemies running around the ad, interact with the ad, tell Noelle you'll ride it with her twice, talk to this salesman, tell him you're something else, walk away, then go back and force Noelle to kill the salesman by saying get it over and over again. Equip the freeze ring right here. Tell her it's natural for her to want to kill you when she questions it. Steal cap and cakes bagels and then keep killing everything. Make Noelle proceed until she destroys the next puzzle, kill some mice and then she'll do it again. In the next room there are two more enemies to kill and then backtrack all the way to Toby's Easter egg area and buy the thorn ring. Equip it now or when you fight Birdly it'll be impossible to cast Snowgrave. I really feel the need to emphasize this with how many comments I got on my last video. Anyways, while you're equipping the thorn ring, go ahead and unequip her silver watch and then equip it to yourself. By the way, this is where the second egg would be, but it's locked when you're on the Snowgrave route. Go to the Birdly fight and just defend until you have 100% TP, then make Noelle use Snowgrave. This kills the bird. Go through the manhole and make your way to the Queen's Palace. Kill everything in sight. I do wonder if there's any reward for clearing every Pippus in the Pippus room. Has anyone done that? Let me know in the comments. There are two real fights to knock out before you get to the Queen fight and then, uh, she doesn't actually fight you. And continue on to the final save point. Put everything in your storage except for your CD bagels, which you're gonna use in this fight. Make sure to save once you're all set up, and with everything equipped, go fight Spamton Neo. It's the hardest fight in the game so far since you have to do it solo, other than Jevil in my opinion, so it might take a while for you to do it, but eventually you'll be victorious. Well, you'll call Noel and she'll finish him off for you. We're not done just yet. Once you go back to the overworld, Birdly is dead. Or, I guess he could be in a coma, but he's probably dead. The door is open, which means either someone came out of it, or someone can go in. Hmm. Go back to the Dark World and talk to Sham, giving him the second Shadow Crystal. Notice that Newbert is absent from the Dark World, which I think is because you didn't talk to him, although I'm not totally sure. Anyways, back to the Overworld. Go meet Noelle at the hospital for your choice of two awful dialogues. Option 1. When the screen goes dark and she starts her monologue, go ahead and walk. You can actually walk using the arrow keys like normal. She'll notice you. Walk towards her again, and she freaks out. The music stops. Before anything happens, Susie intervenes and Noelle heads home. You can do this, or you can do the equally terrible option too. She has her same monologue, and then, if you equipped her watch in Cyberworld, she notices. Again, Susie intervenes before anything else is said. Now, before the video ends, I want to make a bold prediction. Toby Fox has made it known that he likes subverting the expectations of the players of his games. It's happened plenty of times in Deltarune already, most notably during the end of chapter cutscenes. I predict that the end of normal and pacifist runs of the game, I'm talking when chapter 7 is all released, the game is totally fully out, are going to be bad. Like, everybody dies and the world ends bad. Taking an approach where you're not intervening directly in the planned narrative of the game is gonna end when the roaring happens, as explained by Ralse. Think about it. Noelle has a completely unrealized power at the end of the pacifist run. And I think we'll be able to continue along the same lines with future chapters and future characters. They'll be corrupted, but they'll also end up far more powerful than if they just went along with the normal pacifist story. By the end, the roaring is probably going to happen. The titans will be awakened, and the team that was made through your pacifist run are going to be absolutely crushed. But what about the corrupted team? What'll happen when the titans go up against a team of ruined characters that have the insane power that Noelle has by the end of the Snowgrave route? I'm not so sure. I've played through chapters 1 and 2 quite a few times at this point, Point, I just have a feeling that we, as the player intervening in a predetermined story through Deltarune, are gonna have to end up saving the world at the cost of going through these nightmarish routes of destruction. With this theory, I also have a lot of thoughts on Ralsei, but we can save that for another day. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And that's about it. If I missed anything, please let me know, but I've put too long into this game already, and I think I hit just about every point. Of course, more things could be found in the meantime, and if they are, I'll make sure to update you guys. Keep an eye out for my best save ever guide, which should be out sometime over the next couple weeks as well as some other non-Deltarune related content I'm really excited for. I'll always cover this game as long as there's content to make, but I do plan on doing other things in the meantime, and I really hope you guys are down for some real variety in the videos. My biggest goal is to make sure every single video is worth your time to watch. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.